We break into program right now to take you to a tense situation that is playing out on San Antonio's west side. It all centers around police officers shooting a man with felony warrants. That's according to police, police chief William McManus, not far from the Woodlawn Lake area. Yeah, this is happening specifically in North Hamilton and Calabria. Officers there on patrol came across this man. That shooting happened, but tensions escalating. You can see a line of officers now in between a patrol unit there and the crowd that has gathered. Our Lee Waldman has been at the scene since this really all began, uh, kind of giving us a play by play of how things have escalated there. It is a tense situation, Lee. What do we know right now? It's very tense. You know, things have escalated within the last 10 minutes. Um, when the police chief was out here earlier, there were some fa several family members confronting officers, but it wasn't this busy of a scene. Now more family members started to show up. More officers showed up to this side of the crime scene because it's a rather large crime scene as well. You see all the officers in a line here in front of us. That's because one of the sergeants on scene said, stay in this line, don't cross this line. Earlier, they were trying to move people out of this area. Um, Officers were showing restraint, but people started confronting, started trying to push over one of the units there. We saw several water bottles being thrown as well. That's when we saw officers starting to use pepper spray. Um, we're being told that the victim from this officer involved shooting, his mother was also pepper sprayed, and this family member is very upset about that. That is often what they're screaming here at officers about. We heard a pop uh, just down the street with those line of vehicles that you see on your screen right now. We know one of the tires and one of those police units was slash. It's a flat tire at this point. That's when they brought out a paddy wagon and, and started taking people into, into custody here. Very, very tense. Lots of bottles of water, milk being used on people who are pepper sprayed here. I'm not sure the exact number of people with pepper spray, but I do see some officers, they have their hands on their tasers right now ready for whatever is going to happen. People just continuing to scream, calling the officers gang members. You see a woman there just throw water on those officers here. There's people uh, crowded behind us as well, taking their time to say what they want to say to officers here. It's, it's a very tense situation. We apologize for any explicit language that you're hearing on scene, but obviously tensions running very, very high. Family members upset uh, about their loved one being killed here today. All right, Lee, uh, please be careful out there. As you are right in the middle of what you said. It's a very tense situation. Uh, again, what we have witnessed uh, since the end of the 5 o'clock newscast, there were a number of these uh, family members or friends or neighborhood people who were trying to tip over a police unit. Uh, we also know that tires were slashed on at least one police unit. And I think the video that we saw, uh, the live picture that we saw just before we cut away was actually the mother who was pepper sprayed earlier, who was coming back to try to calm down the situation is what it looked like to me. Uh, there have been, a, it, yeah, the woman that you see right there in the uh, black tank top, I believe is the mother of the victim. That's what we're hearing from the scene. She was pepper sprayed earlier uh, as they crossed the line of the police line. I think she is trying to calm the situation down. Uh, we are not sure exactly what's going to happen, but once people started to be arrested on the scene, that's why we decided we wanted to uh, bring this to you at a home to let you know what is happening. There you see the mother now addressing the police officers again. We believe it was her son that was shot by San Antonio police uh, just moments ago. As you can imagine, a very tense situation out there. And... Um, and as what I'm, we hope for is restraint on both sides. And as you can see, officers and the crowd that's gathered there having a face to face confrontation. This is a lot calmer than what we saw just 30 minutes ago when there was that crowd really moving, uh, you know, all as one. As Steve mentioned, our cameras saw uh, the crowd trying to push over uh, one of the officer's vehicles. Let's explain what led up to this. So what we have been told by the police chief, Chief William McManus, was that this afternoon in the area of North Hamilton and uh, Calabria, on the 1300 block of Calabria, officers there were on routine patrol. They came across a man they say is uh, known to them because of the felony warrants to felony warrants that were out for this man for charges of assault on a police officer and felony possession of a firearm.
The chief says those officers tried to stop that man. That man refused to stop for them and at some point pulled a gun from his waistband. That's according to SAPD. That's what then led to three officers on the SAPD force firing at uh, that victim who has now been shot and killed. And of course, all of this happening very fast in a situation where you're gathering information and that's what these people, as well as the officers on scene, are trying to do right now. Obviously, emotions extremely high as people react to this. Yeah, and as we were, so this is all playing out live uh, as you see it here on the city's west side again, maybe four blocks away from Woodlawn Lake itself. And uh, it does look as if officers are trying to engage with some of the protesters to talk to some of the protesters, some of the officers like this one that you see here. Uh, again, it seems as if that is the mother uh, of the victim that we are seeing uh, in the foreground there. And you see officers talking to some of these people uh, who are out there, some of the officers uh, trying to calm the situation. There's another officer talking to protesters, trying to calm the situation, explain exactly what is happening. Uh, but you can see the line behind them. And I do want to say what we have witnessed so far uh, is is we have not seen any confrontations really between police and the protesters. Just a lot of yelling. There were some bottles thrown at police. We have seen water thrown at police and we have seen uh, at least one person pepper sprayed because of all of this. And it, it looks to me as if the mother out there is calling for some restraint. Uh, our Lee Waldman is out there. I know that she has talked to family members about this uh, entire thing. Uh, what we know right now is what police are telling us. Police are telling us that this was a man who had felony warrants out for his arrest, that they tried to make an arrest. He took off running and the chief says he pulled a gun on officers. And one of the felonies he's wanted for is assault on a police officer. So we know that those, those things are uh, what seems to be driving this whole situation here. I, I'm a little concerned too because we are seeing more people arrive on the scene uh, that we saw than we've seen earlier. It does look like though this line of officers that has formed within the last 10 minutes or so, it does look like Things are calmer, as you said, Steve. I mean, you can see Lee there on the scene talking to uh, people who were out there. And what we believe, the woman speaking in the black tank top there, is the victim's mother who was pepper sprayed. We're still gathering a lot of information. And as I'm sure everyone is aware, things can change as, as things develop here. But she was pepper sprayed. We saw her on the ground at one point, someone pouring milk into her eyes uh, to help with that. Somebody who said that they were the victim's sister at the scene told our crew that this man was shot nine times. However, Police Chief William McManus, when we asked him that question, he said he was not aware how many times this person was shot at that moment. But it does look like Right now, as people are still having that face to face interaction, confrontation with officers and obviously dealing with the emotions yes. after someone has been shot and killed here, things are calmer than what we have seen when really you just saw a crowd moving crowds as that as they move and things are um, very excited. You know, it's it's rough. It's a rough situation. It's chaotic but at least we're seeing some peace at the moment. And that's the emotion that you see right there. A loved one is lost for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. A loved one is lost. Police also holding the line. There's a very active investigation that's happening, you know, just a few feet away. That is uh, what led up to this tense situation. And we do know a number of people on the scene of the protesters were taken away uh, in a San Antonio police paddy wagon, for lack of a better word, that showed up. Uh, at one point, police were trying to get through the streets and protesters just sat down. It does appear as if the situation is becoming much calmer out here, which is very good news. Um, and we do know that uh, the chief was on the scene at one point. Uh, we still see some yelling. That is why we have taken down the audio live at the scene because there were some obscenities that were being thrown uh, towards police officers. Uh, so we are we are right now hoping for a calmer situation. And you see police again are trying to disperse the crowd, uh, uh, tr trying to get EMS to the area, I understand as well, for somebody that may be injured. And uh, it looks like Lee is getting ready to give us an update perhaps out there. Um, 
Again, this is a live picture. Lee, can you tell us what's going on out there? Are they trying to make room for an EMS unit to get in? Exactly. So because this is such a tense situation, there's a huge crowd of people here. They're asking people back up so we can get EMS here. Now, we spoke with the victim's mom, um, Arlene, and she tells me that she has breast cancer. She couldn't breathe earlier after being pepper sprayed, so they requested that EMS comes here. That was over 20 minutes ago, but again, trying to get down into the situation. There's a lot of people, a lot going on. They said she can make her way to Glebra to get down to that EMS unit. Because of everything happening, it's hard to get a, a unit down to her her here and um, but I know the, the family is very very upset they, they just keep telling us that he, uh, Kevin Johnson who they've identified the victim as um, he they say he was shot in the back police not confirming that chief McMahon is telling us that he has to review the body camera video before um, he can confirm anything like that but uh, family here is extremely upset sisters of, of Kevin Johnson um, Kevin's mother also very upset they tell us that Kevin had uh, mental health issues he was a bipolar schizophrenic according to the family but again chief McMahon is saying all of this stemmed from officers patrolling this area they saw Kevin they said they recognized him for having several uh, active felony warrants one assaulting a police officer the other felony possession of a firearm. That's why they approached. They said at some point, Kevin Gunn, and then that's when officers fired. There's three officers involved in that, but it's a very, very intense situation here. I understand we have some sound from Police Chief McManus. Let's go ahead and, and listen to that. The officers attempted to stop him. He ran, and at some point, and this is what, I, what I'm not going to talk too specifically about because I have not seen the body cam, at some point, he pulled a gun from his waistband. At what point the officer shot, I don't know because, again, I haven't seen the, 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 uh, the body cam. But that's what we have right now. hear him saying how preliminary all this information is. The process here, he has to go through um, and review all of that body camera video that they have from that scene. He says, he tells us that policy is with San Antonio Police Department, all three of those officers are going to be placed on administrative leave while this investigation is conducted. Now, family here just asking for answers, asking questions, hoping to be spoken to by police. I just heard uh, this officer telling the family EMS is walking up this way to, to meet the mom here and provide her with some care that she needs. Um, th this has all been very, very tense. Uh, it's diffused a bit. That line of officers that was over in the street here, that's now broken up. Officers going back to their individual units. People still here very upset, crowds still gathered, but it's not as an angry situation as it was earlier. Now it is more of a somber situation, crying for their loved one who was lost today. Uh, that, that's the bottom line of this all. Um, someone who they love dearly was lost. Now, earlier we saw officers using pepper spray when things got very, very tense. People were pushing up on officers, trying to knock over that police unit over there, shaking it. There was water bottles thrown at officers here. We heard a pop from one of the units that was parked down the street, and we saw one of the tires deflated. Um, and so that's when they started arresting people. That pepper spray was utilized on, on several people. But officers uh, stood with their hands on their tasers. You can see mom now going over to EMS to get some care that she needs, uh, her daughter, and she telling us that she has breast cancer. Um, another one of the daughters saying that she is pregnant, so they're wanting some care at this point, but very intense. People here very, very upset. They lost someone that they cared about. They said the officers in this situation were the gang members, not the people involved, and, and we're just waiting to get more solid information from police, but that will come after they conclude their internal investigation and finally uh, look through all that body camera video. Hey Lee, let, let me ask you a question. We were obviously watching it live play out uh, as you were. I, I saw officers engage some of the people that had gathered there to start to talk about what happened and maybe defuse the situation. I also thought I saw the mother talk to some of the protesters and try and defuse the situation. Am I, is that accurate? She was talking to her daughters there. Um, she was confronting her daughters, um, one of her daughters right there behind me, um, very upset. And this is another, this is Kevin's sister as well here. They're, they're very upset. That's my sister and we have another sister. There's four of us. Right, and, and so so family here is very upset. You, you saw their, their mom. My brother was run over by the cops. He was shot nine times, couldn't defend himself. He was just running. Like, what are you going to do when you see a bunch of cops that, you know, are 
trained, trained to kill black people. Of course you're gonna freaking yeah. do that. This is something we go through every day. Hey, they Lee. stole my Lee. phone because I right. recorded the top yes. of my phone. Yes, I'm so sorry. And no one wants to give it to me. We're, we're gonna send things back to you all and, and let this situation, as people are trying to grieve here, let yeah. them have their space to grieve a Absolutely. bit. Absolutely, that's what I was gonna to say. To let's, let's back yes. off the situation a little bit and let these people grieve. It seems as if it's definitely calmed down. Uh, obviously, there are two sides to the story. We've heard from the police chief that this was a man who had multiple felonies, uh, felony warrants. One was fel felon in possession of a firearm, and one was, we understand, assault on a police officer. So uh, that's one part of it. The other part of it, obviously, a family grieving for a loved one that is lost. But uh, what I wanted to... Uh, kind of point out is we saw police engage with some of the people that were there grieving. We saw the mother engage with her daughters to try to pull them back. And uh, uh, thankfully, it seems like cooler heads have prevailed right now because I was watching that thinking the whole time, this is not San Antonio. Exactly. And as you're watching that play out, as we both were in the newsroom moments before we walked out here to the studio, you're just hoping that you're not going to see something take mm -hmm. a turn, uh, another deadly turn. Someone gets seriously yes. injured. And when you see that line of officers, uh, it's alarming because it, it, they thought there was a need for that. But it is good news that we have seen, like you said, some of those people who are understandably emotional try to calm the situation down themselves, having conversations with the officers, of course tense, uh, but seeing that line of officers disperse and those officers be able to, to talk with the people who are there because there's a lot of processing happening at this yeah. scene as officers are doing that during their investigation. Important to note that the police chief did say that there is body camera footage here, so that is key. And office, of, of course, everyone else dealing with those intense emotions because there is a life that has been lost here. The circumstances leading up to that, certainly something uh, that are going to be sorted out in, in the hours and the days ahead.